Убили силу, пытайтесь нас, вы на войне или где? Все вы быстрее, брат, быстрее, беги! Аллах, вот Давай, Дэма, блядь! Олег, давай, блядь, беги! The United States will soon announce the transfer of $2.3 billion worth of weapons to Ukraine as part of the next military aid package, according to Pentagon Chairman Lloyd Austin. As the U.S. Secretary of Defense said at the beginning of his meeting with his Ukrainian counterpart Rustem Yumarov, the package will include anti-tank weapons, as well as missiles for the Patriot and other air defense systems. Make no mistake, Ukraine is not alone, and the United States will never waver in our support. Alongside some 50 allies and partners, we'll continue to provide critical capabilities that Ukraine needs to push back Russian aggression today and to deter Russian aggression tomorrow," Austin said. Austin said that the missiles will be provided under the accelerated procurement procedure, achieved via altering the shipment order for other recipients. He also added that during the meeting with Yumarov, they plan to discuss ways to meet Ukraine's security needs and create forces to repel possible Russian aggression in the future. Last week, Western media reported rumors that the United States would announce a new $150 million military aid package for Ukraine. This was supposed to happen on July 1, but American officials did not make any statements. With the latest $2.3 billion, the U.S. has committed to more than $53.5 billion in security assistance to Ukraine since the Russian invasion in February 2022. With that support, we have stopped Russia, stopped the aggression toward people, toward our values, national interests," Yumarov said in thanking Austin for the support. Austin said Ukraine continues to be locked into a relentless fight with Russia, and Russia is intensifying its bombardment of Ukrainian cities and civilians. During the meeting with Austin, Yumarov said Ukraine was looking forward to becoming a member of NATO. Hopefully soon Ukraine will receive its invitation. Russia lost 33,713 troops, 352 tanks, 1,393 artillery systems in Ukraine in June. The Russian army's losses in Ukraine in June amounted to 33,713 troops. The General Staff of the Armed Forces of Ukraine said this in its report. In total, the enemy's losses in June amounted to 33,713 occupiers, 352 tanks, 589 AFVs, 1,393 artillery systems, 22 MLRS, 58 air defense systems, 3 aircraft, 997 UAVs, 1,758 vehicles and 284 special equipment units, the report says. As reported by Ukraine Form, the Air Defense Forces of Ukraine's land forces destroyed 300 means of aerial reconnaissance and attack of the Russian invaders in June, an Su-25 aircraft, three cruise missiles and 296 drones. The Kremlin does not release official statistics on military casualties. Ukraine's general staff is reporting that Russia has lost more than 540,000 troops in Ukraine since the beginning of the full-scale invasion, a number that includes killed and injured. Sergei Krivenko of Moscow-based Citizen Army Law, a human rights group, says Russia's aggressive censoring of statistics, along with virtually no remaining independent news outlets, means that the rate of casualties is unlikely to sway popular opinion about the war. In the 1990s, when the Chechen war began, there were independent media outlets that objectively discussed the military topic on their pages and told the truth about the losses he told. And this had a sobering effect on society. There is the most severe censorship now. 
The authorities have everything under control, and for publications of this kind, you can easily get a prison term. Krivenko also noted that the majority of troops sent to Ukraine are contract soldiers, an important distinction from the Afghan and Chechen wars, fought primarily by forced conscripts that were sent to slaughter, which caused tension and backlash in society, even to the point of creating social movements. Those who voluntarily signed contracts to fight in Ukraine, he added, made their own choice. In addition, they receive a decent salary, he said. That is, ordinary people do not feel particularly sorry for them. Krivenko said that while Russia's enormous losses in Ukraine cannot be hidden, with cemeteries expanding in every Russian city and town, it will not force the Kremlin to change course. They will only turn up patriotic rhetoric more intensely to explain the growing losses, he said. They will repeat that there is a war with the West, so everyone goes to the front.